Hey everybody, today I want to share a tutorial with you on how to smooth out the background of your images. This is a question that I get asked a lot. A lot of people email me and say, John, how do you actually smooth out all of your backgrounds? How do you make them look so crisp? Well, the answer first of all is to actually, when you're shooting in the studio, to use a backdrop that is clean to begin with. As we often say, you know, get it right in camera first. Yes, it's a cliche, but it's true, and it does save you a lot of time after the fact. However, let's assume that that's not been something you've been able to put into place. So what can you do to fix this without spending a shed load of time using things like the clean tool? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Here's gonna to be a quick little trick as to how you can go about smoothing out your background. So the first thing to do is to take a copy of the background layer, so, uh, Control J, that's Command J if you're on a Mac. And what we want to do is to select our magic wand tool. And we're going to use that to select just the background to begin with. We want to separate the background from our actual model. Now at the top here, you'll see that you've basically got some settings that control the tolerance of the actual the magic wand tool. Now, I find a good place to start is 11 by 11 with a tolerance of, you know, let's say 10. And we'll see how we go with that. So with those settings chosen, if I now select on the background, you'll see that straight away I've predominantly selected the majority of the background area. Obviously, there's a few more areas that we want to go in and select. So if you hold down the shift key whilst making further selections, you know, the selected area will be added to the selection that already exists. And you basically just need to continue doing that until you've selected the vast majority of your background area. And if I go ahead and, and just keep doing that, uh, you'll see that I've pretty much highlighted all of the background. Now, when I zoom in, you can see there's a few areas that have been missed and we do wanna try and capture those as well. One thing that you can do is you can use the lasso tool to do this for you. Again, holding down shift and just highlighting the area that you want to add as well. Go over the top, you know, a little bit. You know, you don't have to be uber precise or anything with this. You know, if you've got 20, 30 images that you need to get through, you don't want to be spending a long time on each of these. This is a, a quick way for you to actually tidy up the background. Now, don't worry too much if you select all of uh, the background. It doesn't have to be 100%, but what you do want to make sure that you don't do, rather, is... Uh, go into you don't want your selection to cover any of your model at all you need to keep that separate all right so that's that's good enough um, I think I'll just go in and tidy this little bit up here you know I'm not being crazily precise perfect that will do okay so with that selection what we now want to do is rather than selecting all of our background we want to invert the selection to do that on a PC, that's Control shift i and now you can see that the model is selected rather than the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut her out. Uh, just do Control x and we've now, if you look over on the right-hand side on the layer, you can see that our model has now been cut out from the background. Now the next step then is I'm going to go in and I basically want to if you look down let's say on the right here you can see that we've got all these different shades it looks a bit dirty on the background and, and that's what we want to try and smooth out so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose filter blur Gaussian blur and if we zoom in a little bit I basically want to choose a setting that will you know we just keep increasing the threshold or the radius rather for the blur until we can no longer see our dark patches and our background is smooth and as I keep increasing that you see that um, you know it's starting to blend together and I think if we just keep going until about 50 and I'm pretty happy with that and you'll see this banding that's okay don't worry about that that's something that we can go in and fix afterwards the priority here is to make sure that you actually you know get rid of all the uh, dust and scratches and the dirt essentially on the on the background you'll often see a lot of this on the on the floor you know of uh, your studio so let's make sure that all of that is taken care of by this blur so that's a reasonably good setting so we're going to okay that and now in order to address this banding 
what we're going to do is we're going to add some noise. So we simply go filter, noise, add noise. And just from experience, I tend to find that always less than 1% is about the right level. You may want to experiment on this. It's going to be determined by what particular camera you're using. But, you know, as, as, a, as a max, you want to be at 1% maximum in, in the majority of cases. I use a D810 and I tend to find anywhere between 0.5 to 1% is, is a good value to use. All right, so if I just OK that, and you can see that the banding has now gone from our background. So, you know, obviously, if you look at our subject, we've still got her cut out, as it were, and you can see that, you know, we want to actually put her back in place. In order to do that, we can just go Edit, Paste Special, Paste in Place, and voila. Our model is now back in place on a much improved background, I think you'll agree. We just have a, if I can combine those two layers, if I just go to what it looked like originally, and then with the improved background. And there you have it. So that's pretty much it. I mean, one thing that you can do if you find that's a bit too much and you actually want to rein in that edit a little bit, you can just reduce the opacity of the layer and that will allow some of the background detail to persist through. I tend to, to kind of float around the 90% mark. That seems to uh, work quite well for this image. Uh, and again, if you, one trick that you can do to, to take this even further is if you were to add a layer mask What you can actually do is use that to bring back some of the detail from the layer below. So for example in the shadow area, you might want to bring some of that detail through still, some of the texture on the floor, and just behind the model here as well. Sometimes it's good to, to bring some of that in a little bit, just so that it doesn't look you know too smooth. And there you have it, a simple, quick, effective method to smoothing out the background of your studio photography images. Thanks for watching.